welcome to day three. It got really cold last night. So once again, a diesel heater for the win. I woke up in the middle of the night and had to kick it on because it was cold. Even this morning, it's chilly. You can see my breath. But what's really cool, and I know the GoPro's not gonna pick it up, which stinks, but you can kind of see as the sun is coming up, you can see the steam. starting to come off of everything off the solar panel but out on the lake the whole lake has a cool like layer of fog over it and for some reason my neighbor left in the middle of the night which was awesome because that woke me up and there were cars in and out of here all night that and then being woken up from uh, being cold. I slept in a little bit today, so I'm gonna just kind of get packed up, have probably another just super simple breakfast instead of something super complicated. Hopefully we have a better mileage day today. Still kind of hoping to hit that loose goal of making to Spotlight Cave. If I wanna do that before I need to head home, and today needs to be a pretty good mileage day, so fingers crossed, but let's start getting camp cleaned up here and get on the road. And camp is all cleaned up. We are ready to hit the road. So we'll see. I figured if I'm gonna make Spotlight Cave tomorrow, or at least be able to check it out Monday before I head home, I need to get real close to Detroit Lake today. So we will see what happens. <music> going around the north side of Timothy Lake. It looks like the route curves around to the main campground. It looks like there's several little campgrounds here on the north side. They've all been closed, so I'm gonna assume the main campground's closed too, but I'm hoping it's close enough. It looks like it's really close to the lake that I can at least get in there and take some pictures and stuff, so we'll see. We got a little bit. Gotta make our way around the west side of the lake here, so. Boy, I gotta tell you, they're not in the super greatest shape, but they're pretty decent forest roads and after yesterday I am I'm ready for some nice <laughs> forest roads uh, yeah that that road really beat me up man I'm old the back's hurting this morning so yeah I'm ready for this so let's see hopefully we can get around the other side here and get some cool pictures and maybe some drone shots of Timothy Lake. we're about to cross the dam Looks like there's a little uh, fee site over here off the main road, so we're gonna go over there. I went hat mode. Why didn't nobody tell me I had that giant pimple on my forehead? Good Lord, I looked in the mirror and scared myself. So I found the day use area. So we're gonna walk down to the lake and get some drone footage. We are here. So you can see there's different campgrounds all along the side here. I just came around up here. I came on this road here. Day use area. Is there a thing in here? Oh, look at that. My wallet is in the camper. I'm gonna use the bathroom. Looks like you can walk right down here by the lake. I think the main campground is right over my shoulder here. So we're gonna walk right down to the edge of the lake here and get some drone footage.
Look at that, a perfect little rock to take off from. little section I'm on here uh, right outside Timothy Lake it's pretty tight as far as plant life it doesn't look well traveled it's weird it does but it doesn't the road is actually in really decent shape surprisingly but the trees and stuff you can definitely tell not a lot of people come down here and it's pretty thick in the trees I was hoping to be in some sunshine today I'd really like the sun to heat up that solar shower I could go for a shower tonight either that or hopefully I make really good time get the camp nice and early so I can sit in the sun and get nice and warm so I can take a shower tonight we'll see how this road goes it's getting a little tight in here but nothing too bad I'll take tight over the bumpity bumpities again today so here we go so I cheated a little bit part of the route kind of zigzags back and forth across the main highway I basically skipped those two zigzags to try and save me some time where this road meets back up here. I mean, really, I could have taken it even further because this meets up with it again, but I'm not going to skip all of it. You know, I feel like that's kind of how trips go. Like your goals should change. And like I said earlier, one of my goals, if you want to call it today, is I'd really like to, to get in a shower and I'd like to get far enough. Really want to get to that cave. Sometimes you need to make adjustments to the plan. You know, I only have so many days and if I want to get there, then sometimes you got to make some sacrifices in other areas to make those other things happen. Don't be afraid to change plans, you know, mid trip. Yeah, it's disappointing. Who knows what I would have seen going down those roads, but it's not like I can never come back here and, and do the full thing again when I have more time. So I skipped some loops to meet up with this back on this dirt road here. This one heads pretty much due south, which is good. And we'll see how long it takes me. That doesn't seem too bad. Ooh, that one was tight. So we're on the road. It's 1130. We'll see how I'm feeling a little bit. If I want to stop and have lunch or do what I did yesterday and just eat trail mix. So onwards and upwards. had some bikers pass me and the last guy in the line said there were two more guys so I sat there waiting off to the side for a little bit and they never came so I'm hoping they're okay I decided to just start going I kind of just be wary that there might be two more coming I'm hoping they're okay because I'm a good quarter to half mile down the road now from where they passed me and I still have not come across them I mean luckily I guess for them they are coming this road is not great I'm only cooking along here at about 10 miles an hour so I don't know we'll see hopefully Hopefully they're okay and they're just way far back or or what, but I'm surprised I haven't run into them yet. So if I see them or don't see them, I'll let you guys know. All right, so I just ran into a group of three bikers and I asked them if they were with that other group and they said no. So I asked them if they saw two more because they said they had two more in their group and that I haven't run across them yet. And they did say they saw two more further down the road. They were sitting at the intersection, I think which I'm getting close to the intersection, I think of a paved road. Hopefully that's them. And uh, I don't have to worry about running into like an accident or something. That would be bad. We'll see, I'll probably see them here in a minute. 
and we're good. The other two just rolled past me. Obviously, I would love to try and catch them on camera and stuff just to kind of show, but I only got the one camera and I don't want to set it up on the mount so that I'd be able to pick it up and kind of record as necessary. So but anyway, we should be all good. All bikers present and accounted for. We're about to come out onto the road here in a minute. So that tracks with what the uh, other group said about them. Boy, I tell you, I can't seem to get away from people. I thought for sure the site, it's a decent ways off the main road. I was like, yeah, this will be good enough. And if I'll be danged if right back over there, there's a pull off off this road. It's a tiny little pull off up on a hill and there's somebody there. It's not meant to be this trip, I think. I don't know, we'll see. I got one more night and hopefully nobody will be out, but I can't blame anybody. It's, it's super nice. You can see blue skies, late September. Like we don't have many of those days left. This is a blessing here. Not a cloud in the sky. Yeah, these days are numbered for sure. So I don't blame people, but this is my site here. Night three. Yeah, this is gonna be camp night three. Not a huge site. I'm gonna have a little issue with these trees here in a minute with the solar and then the sun ought to go there. So I'll have some time in there. The batteries aren't too bad. I don't know why I've been trying to cha change, charge my anchor in the 12 volt jack in the back of the Bronco. And for some reason, I mean the bumps, but I feel like it shouldn't just fall out like that. I have to check it periodically. And sure enough, I don't know when the last time I checked it, but when we I pulled in here, it was unplugged. It should have been fully charged probably by now, as long as it's been sitting in the back and I've been driving, it should have been fully charged, but it's only at about 80, which is probably good, but I have battery anxiety or whatever you want to call it. 80 is probably plenty. The battery on the camper has about 80 also. You know, you never, you don't want to run out of battery. And that's the other thing. I don't know what's going on either. The Bronco should be trickle charging that battery. And I don't know if it's just not enough. The only thing that's really running when we're driving is the fridge occasionally. Other than that, I feel like it should be charging. What's really nice, I got to camp early. Well, I would have got here even earlier. I didn't record it. I picked a different spot first and oh boy, I'm sure I put some real good deep scratches on the Bronco. I went further than I should have. And then it took me forever to turn around, but I pulled in here. What time is it now? Three o'clock, yeah, I pulled in here about two o'clock. I should give the solar shower plenty of time. I'm gonna give it a little more time to soak up some of that sun before it dips behind those trees. And hopefully the water should be warm enough and I am gonna take me a shower. I'm gonna do that. I'm letting these things charge while I have sunlight. Whoops, get out of the panel. And then maybe make some dinner a little bit. So I thought I was gonna have neighbors when I first pulled into the campsite. Turns out they were forestry guys or something. They were doing work up here maybe. I just walked up here to see if I could tell what they were doing. I think they were definitely burning some stuff. I saw the big truck leave, so I was like, oh, nobody's gonna be up here. Let me walk up there and see what they were doing. And check this out. This is a little campsite up here. Like, I could have pulled in up here. I would have had room here, probably, in this open area here. But look at this. Are you kidding me? And it's too late to move now. I ain't breaking everything down to come up here, but oh man, that's awesome. The saga continues. I think they were, I think they were doing some burning up here. I walked a little further and there's hoses here. And when I first pulled in, I thought I smelled some smoke and saw some smoke. So that kind of worried me. So I was standing around waiting for a little bit. Like, is there a fire around here? I think they were burning. So there's a connection down there, which I think was on the truck. And then it comes over to here splits off to two like garden hoses and they're all up around here yeah they were burning stuff look at they got a fire line cut out here hoses all up around to keep it from spreading there's probably water in there still but they probably got little holes in the hose to keep it all the way around but yeah look at that that tree's all burned up you got burnt stuff here. 
Yep. They were definitely doing some prescribed burns or something around here. There must have been like a, obviously that tree was dead, but yeah. Okay, mystery solved. I don't know how much of that I got. I didn't realize my battery died until I went to actually stop the recording. Said I had like 20 something percent battery left, but it must have just died. So anyway, I had dinner, had some nice barbecue chicken, like pre-packaged stuff, but you know, I'm all about keeping it simple. I'm not gonna be making up fancy chicken out here by myself. I was, I had pointed out that I was soaking up the last of the sun on the solar panel for the camper battery, but now is she gone? I think I got it close to 100. It was really close last time I checked. Should be good. Tomorrow should be a nice, easy day. I gotta bypass a lot of the trail just because of fire closures. I, I looked at the updated map last night and it looks like the route that the BDR takes might be open now. I just don't want to chance it. it. You know, after today and this thing is, you know, unfortunately it's not easy to turn around. I had a couple of interesting times today. I should have recorded it. I was getting frazzled and I didn't bust the camera out and it's hard too by yourself. I don't know how I would have recorded that and tried to three point turn this thing around on a forest road. Yeah, dinner been had. I just cleaned up, did dishes. Everything's put away. It's time to relax for the rest of the night. And then tomorrow will be a nice easy day. I should definitely be able to get to explore that cave. I'm hoping to get to camp like super early. I haven't unhooked this whole time, but I will because I wanna be able to get to camp and then drive over to the cave. A couple of the camp spots that I have picked out that are hopefully available are pretty close by. So uh, my plan is to set up camp and then head out with the Bronco and go check out the cave. I'll have a nice easy day, spend the night, and then I can drive into Sisters, get gas, and turn around and head home. And I'll have made my loose goal of making it to Sisters. Granted, I did take some bypasses and, and didn't take the whole route, and I probably wouldn't have made it had I not done that. I probably wouldn't have made it this far. I'm only about 12 miles from Detroit Lake. Tomorrow is gonna be a great day. I can't wait to see the cave in person. I hope the sun is hitting it right. It's called Spotlight Cave because there's a hole in the top and when the sun shines through it, it looks like a spotlight shining down into the cave. So I'm really excited. I hope I get to see it and I hope the sun cooperates. So we will see you guys in the morning. The sun began to set on night three. The stress of the day's challenges melting away as the shadows of the trees grew ever longer. Anticipation of tomorrow's goal of Skylight Cave front and center. This night, I was alone. Alone in the beauty and silence of nature, the worries of everyday life far away over distant mountain passes. I sat and watched the sunset, the sound of nothingness carrying my stress away on the cool mountain breeze. I climbed into bed, and as a sense of relaxation enveloped both my physical and mental self, I drifted off to sleep, alone but at peace. Good morning, welcome to day four. It is actually pretty nice out here. I must have felt cooler in the camper than it was because I stepped out and it is actually not that bad out here this morning. No dew all over everything, so that's nice. And because today I have a short travel day, I am going to make myself a good breakfast this morning. No more chintzy cheap, uh, beef jerky breakfast for me and I might even make myself some coffee too I'm gonna do that right now and then have a good breakfast and get camp cleaned up and get on the way So what do we have for breakfast this morning? We have eggs. We have other stuff that's 
very deep down. Sausage. Hash browns. And my favorite that got a bent, bacon. You might be wondering what's with the eggs in the tin foil. We have yet to get eggs to not stick on this dang blackstone, so we put it in the tin foil and we cook it in the tin foil, and that seems to work better for us. So that's why the eggs are in the tin foil. And just like that, it's like I was never here. All packed up, ready to go. Like I said, today's gonna be a quick travel day. It's about 50 miles, but 30 of that's gonna be on main highway. So that's gonna take no time at all, which is fine. That'll give me time to get set up at camp and hopefully go explore Spotlight Cave. So let's hit the road. This is gonna date me, but it's a Motown kind of day. stretch here back on the last patch of dirt heading towards camp just past a bunch of people like there's an OHV area around here but I'm going in quite a ways more so I don't think I'm gonna run into a bunch of people but it's gonna be slow going it seems like these last couple miles it's the roads not gravelly or anything it's kind of sandy but just bumps and dips and all kinds of stuff so it's gonna be slow going
last night at camp and yet once again the camp spot I picked out I couldn't get there you see over my shoulder here blocked so I ended up pulling off the side of the road here but the best part let me move over look at that in the background is that not awesome but hold on there's more wait there's more is that trademarked let's walk around this way and we got ta-da more mountains over there so I need to look at the map better I think those are the three sisters and this is broken top over here I need to look at the map but I'm I'm almost positive that's broken top and those are the three sisters over there so I'd say not too bad even though I didn't get quite to where I was going ooh she a little dirty <laughs> again rough road coming in here I think I'm not going to try and get go to the cave today it just because of where I had to pull off this would be a big pain in the butt to unhook and then try and turn around and go and just the road coming in and up here is very slow going I, I, I don't want to be gone for three hours so the plan is because it is on the way out and towards sisters I'm going to try and get moving early in the morning and just stop at the cave on the way to sisters and uh, spend a little time there just another relaxing day at camp got the solar panels going again because I had a lot of stuff to charge last night so I used up like half of the anchor so trying to get her back up but now all of a sudden this haze wants to move in so it's not giving me quite full sun but it should charge and it says about an hour so it's only what time is it oh goodness it's only 135 so we should have plenty of time to get that sucker up to 100 and then if I use it all, I use it all because I go home tomorrow, so I don't have to worry about battery anymore. So we'll see. We'll try and get it up as much as we can. I think what I want to do is take a walk down where this road ends and just see what that spot would have been like. When you look at it, like I looked at it on Onyx just because I had a better satellite view with Onyx, and it looked like a big open area, so that's why I was shooting for that. I'm gonna take a, I might take a walk down there and uh, just check it out see what it looks like all right here we go i mean you can see there ain't no way <laughs> nobody's getting through here they haven't come and cleaned it up so i'm gonna be careful i'm not gonna hurt myself just for the sake of exploring but yeah dang this tree was huge there's the end of it over there see it goes way down there so I gotta climb up over this so we'll see I got water I got bear spray just in case because I have no idea what could be out here All sorts of woodland creatures running around, little chipmunks. I'm hoping I have not really seen much wildlife. I saw a deer real quick, and I'm about to lose my drone here. It's trying to find me. And I'd rather it not crash into the trees right here. It gets pretty thick up here, so I might land it anyway. Ooh, that was close. You know, technology's great, but man, sometimes I tell you, it got caught up in these trees trying to follow me right here. And you can see it gets pretty thick down there. So I couldn't even see it. I was trying to get it out and then I finally saw it. So I maneuvered it out here into the open and then landed it here on the road. 
Woo! I mean, I have DJI care, but you know, that would suck. I'm sure people have lost drones. I've seen people lose drones before. It's gotta suck. Though I probably could have recovered it. It's not like it's hard to get where it was flying, so. Anyway, that's enough of the drone footage. Let's see what we find down here. I'm running low on battery, of course. So we'll see when I get to the end of the road if anything interesting pops up. Well, turns out I wasn't that far away. Just that little bit. But yep, this is definitely what I saw when I was looking. A big open area. This is what I saw for sure on satellite. But you know what? Being on the side of the road there, it actually works out better. I mean, you got a little bit of a view of the mountain right there but this is surrounded with trees which is nice i bet you all sorts of woodland critters come walking through this open area here and i'm sure they use well maybe they don't anymore because of all the trees but i'm sure they use this road is a little trail to get up out of here. I'm hoping to see something later, maybe. Fingers crossed, something. Anything. A deer, another deer, I'll take that. All I've seen are chipmunks. When I left camp this morning, there were quite a few grouse kind of running around the road and flying around. And chipmunks, that's it. Oh, and a turkey vulture. I saw one turkey vulture, so. I'm hoping, once I get settled in here and quit stomping around, that maybe something will come out. Because I actually have a pretty good open view of a lot of land. I have, I have binoculars, so I'm going to take a look around a little later as the sun goes down. Anyway, alright, I'm going to get back to camp here. That was worth checking out though. I'm actually kind of glad I might have had I been able to get down there I might have just turned around and come back to where I was at anyway much better view so all right back to camp all right got a shower in which was nice shower on the last night it was a little bit warmer because I had been sitting here in the sun but I tell you something if if I don't get a good sunset like I know this is gonna blow out the GoPro pretty bad but I'm gonna turn it around anyway so you can see this but the the Sun is gonna set like somewhere over there you got Mount Washington right there if I don't get a good sunset I'm gonna kind of be mad <laughs> so it is now 445 so I'll probably get ready to make an early dinner here. I didn't have lunch again. Just that nice big breakfast kept me full all day. So really haven't felt hungry, but starting to feel hungry now. I'll probably just do a little early dinner here and get ready for what I hope is an amazing sunset in a few hours. So yeah, time to make some dinner. that the show closes on day four center stage the excitement of getting to explore skylight cave however just out of view the looming reality of this being my last night on the bdr the visit to the cave my curtain call but there was plenty of time to worry about that tomorrow tonight i basked in the splendor of the sunset mount washington and the sisters standing sentry on my camp today was a good day
Good morning from the, would these be considered the foothills of Mount Washington? I don't know. Good morning on day five, final partial day on the BDR. Already started getting camp picked up a little bit. I'm uh, enjoying my beef jerky breakfast while doing that. We're gonna get finished packed up here, head over to Skylight Cave. I kept calling it Spotlight Cave. I was trying to just look up some more information on it last night. It's Skylight Cave, which kind of makes a little more sense. They're like skylights in the top of the cave. So it looks like there's a parking area there, which is good. Not, I'm sure it's not huge, but I'm hoping if I get there early enough and the fact that it's a Monday and not a holiday that there shouldn't be many people there, I hope. Because it says the key time to get there, if there's no clouds, which I don't know if you could see, but there's clouds. Hopefully they burn off as the sun comes up. The best time to go to see the light rays coming in is about nine to 11, they said. That probably work out really good with timing. It's not really far away from here. I think I calculated at about two miles, maybe. So it should take me maybe 20 minutes, depending on how the road is. If it's anything like it was getting in here, it's continuing on down that same road, then yeah, it'll take me about 20, 30 minutes because it's, it's slow going, but still that's not bad so i'm going to finish getting camp cleaned up and get over to the cave and we're officially on the road so i it looks like i can follow this straight and then here let me show you so i'm going to come out here and then follow this little guy here back down to here and then that right there will take me to skylight cave skylight cave like I said, it's maybe about two miles, so we'll see how the road is uh, continuing on. Hopefully not too bad. Well, we're earning this one. Yeah! I will forever remember this trail. parking area which is really nice they leave a little sign here park here I mean there's some spots over there there's plenty of spots to park around here I think it's just a walk up the road there so I'm gonna grab my jacket and a flashlight and head on over all right away we go leaving the Bronco and the camper back there heading up the road got some water flashlight the DJI bag really comes in handy for other things. I also brought my other tripod with my phone holder on it, so hopefully I can get some photos of myself standing in the spot. Uh, that's why I wanted to call it Spotlight Cave, because that's what they look like. They look like spotlights coming down. Wow, this road's really overgrown. I see why they say to park there. Check this out. There's tire tracks through here, but this sand is so pliable, I can see tire tracks staying here for a long time without anybody having actually been through here. So I'm hoping, ooh, just walked through a spider web. There's some signs somewhere on where it is exactly. 
there's a little trail here. I'm assuming that it's down this way, down this trail. Yeah, that's crazy because it shows... <laughs> Gaia, you show this road continuing on and it surely does not. It ends right here. Like this is it. Something's in there. I think I go this way. This looks like a little trail. I hope this is the way there. Well, no, this isn't a trail. It stops right here. It's all overgrown. It's got to be around here somewhere. Maybe I passed it. I don't know. I'm not going to take you with on my ramblings around the woods. And when I find it, I'll come back. Well, I'm the moron. I walked down the wrong road. No wonder it doesn't end, but still, Gaia shows that road going all the way down. No, it surely does not. That needs to be updated. Okay, let's go down the right road this time and find the cave. Now that we're on the right road, I do not see any other cars around here. There is an upper parking lot here, but they didn't recommend driving up to it. And it looks like they do like you to park back there. Unless somebody drove up here, I don't think anybody's here, which would be totally cool. So here's the right road. Like you could definitely drive up here. And there's parking there. And you could conceivably park there, but it is a little tight. So, I mean, if you're like me and you don't mind getting pinstripes on your vehicle, you could come up a little further. I imagine on the weekends and, oh, here it is, that this is super busy. Hopefully the ladder's here because it says it's open through the end of September. So I'm hoping the ladder is still here because they said there'll be a ladder. Oh no! Unless this is just one of the openings? No, nope, I'm pretty sure that's the... This is where the ladder is, normally. It's already gone. Oh man! What a bummer! Yeah, you can see the, well, maybe you can on the GoPro. You can see the steel feet down there. It looks like some idiot put a log here and they tried to climb down there. Oh man, what a bummer. Let's see, does this sign, I thought I read it was open through September. Let's see, I'm trying to see here. No, it doesn't say. I mean, this cave is definitely home to bats. I'm trying to see, right there. Closed October 1st through April 30th, Skylight Cave. Well, what a bummer, man. Let me just walk around and make sure, but I'm almost positive that's the entrance to it. I know there's a way to get like up on top of the spotlights or skylights. So let me just walk around and see but I'm almost positive that's the entrance where the where they have the ladder cool. to get in. And yep, there's the skylights right there. Which, I mean, to be fair, the sun's right there. So it's at a weird angle. Probably not great to go late in the season like this, but man, what a bummer. Let's see if I can shine the flashlight down there and you guys can at least see in there. I mean, that's pretty far down in there. If you were to fall down through there, you'd be hurting. Let's see, there's another one close by right here to my right. Let's check that one out. First, let me secure everything. Definitely don't want to drop anything into the cave. But yeah, I guess this is, this cave is home to bats. I wonder if I get this close enough. I hope you can see in there. Oh yeah. 
I mean, that's a good 30 feet down to the bottom. Man, what a bummer. I can't believe it. They must have closed it early for some reason. I mean, it is late September. What is today? September 23rd. Man, I would have thought at least they would have kept it open this weekend. Well, bummer, man. I guess we're not going in the cave. I'm going to see if I can get some pictures on my phone. I don't know how well that's going to work, but this is an old lava tube cave, and it's cool walking up where the skylights are. You can see that's all lava rock. You can really tell here. So there was a lava flow here at some point. Got a couple of pictures. I'll go back by the main entrance of the cave too, get a couple pictures. And I'll just have to plan to come back here again because I really want to go in there. The pictures look really cool. So I'll have to try and make plans to come earlier in the summer, but hopefully during the week so it's not crazy busy because I'm sure this place gets pretty busy in the summer on the weekends. I mean, I, there's just foot traffic prints and motor vehicle prints, dog prints, everything over here. So anywho, well, there's the entrance to Skylight Cave. I guess I was reading too, it goes that way towards the skylights, but then it goes that way for like 900 feet or more. So you can go back and forth, but I guess that way it kind of pretty much ends at the skylights there. I guess get some pictures over here and head back to the car. I'm heading back to the car. I'm good on gas, so I was gonna continue the BDR into Sisters because I thought I would need gas, but since I filled up in Detroit, I really didn't use too much coming in here. So I'm gonna take a shortcut out of here. That's actually the directions on how to get to the cave itself. It will shave some time off my drive time home instead of going all the way into Sisters. So heading back to the car and uh, I guess it's time to go home. That was a nice final hurrah. Got back to the camper in the car. Already started to dump my solar shower. Basically all I do is open the valve and just kind of let it drain as I'm driving. But I wanted to save the water in the water tank just in case whatever. I went in the cave and it's gross and that way I had some water to help you know wash stuff off or whatever. So since the cave was closed I came back went to go into the galley kitchen. The drain for the onboard tank is under the sink there. Open it up. Yeah this guy forgot to secure the soap dispenser and it decided to flop over and break open right on top of my fridge. So I just spent 15 minutes cleaning up gobs of palm olive dish soap from all over the fridge and then it had started to get up underneath the lid of the fridge that was fun we're back on the road now i'm heading back towards the shortcut gonna go ahead and get back to the main roads and get on home i'm ready to take a shower and sleep in my own bed but at the same time this was extremely fun it was very relaxing it was nice to get out we didn't do a whole lot of camping this year my next video will probably be about what i've alluded to in other videos as far as stuff going on behind the scenes what our future holds what we have plans for going forward anyway i'm gonna get back to the main road and get on home As I make my way out of the forest, just a quick note, if you do plan on visiting Skylight Cave, I would definitely recommend an all-wheel drive vehicle. This road right here, you do not want to take a regular car on. I can also see there are lava rock mixed in with the regular rock, and I know that those are very sharp. So decent tires, I would, I mean, at your own risk, come back here with, you know, your all season radials, but I would recommend a more all-terrain tire, honestly, to come back here, even just this section of the road. I don't know what the rest of the road looks like that I'm about to get on, but it's pretty rough. It's slow going, so plan for time to get back here. And of course, enjoy the cave responsibly. There are rules posted right there at the entrance of how to be respectful. It is a bat habitat, so, you need to be respectful of their home. You are in their home. Anytime you're out in the woods, you're in nature's home. This doesn't belong to us. This belongs to them. We just pass through and enjoy it. Make sure you're respectful of the cave, follow the rules, and don't be like the idiots that put a log there to get down just because they want to see the cave so bad. The cave's gonna be there for a long, long time. I will definitely come back here because I definitely want to get to the inside of the cave. This isn't too far from home. Don't do stuff like that. That's what gets things closed. They will close off that cave and not allow people to enjoy it anymore 
if people do stupid stuff like that. Anyway, I just wanted to get on there and give my spiel just like everybody else. You know, 99% of us enjoy the outdoors responsibly. It's that 1% that's gonna ruin it for the rest of us. Remember to you 99%, myself included, try and do a little extra cleanup if you can. You know, obviously in addition to your own stuff. Of course, the saying goes, leave it better than you found it. Being on the rest of this road, this is not bad. This road's not bad, but it's that last two miles is what's rough. And why I wouldn't recommend just your average everyday car to go back there. Like this road, I'm cooking along here, 27, and it's not bad at all. Uh, you pass through a lot of private property. And I've had people ask me before, what does that mean? You are on a national forest road, so you can be on the road, but you cannot leave the road. Anything off the road is private property, so you can't go wandering off exploring into the woods you're on private property but as long as you stay on the road then you're fine you're just passing through a lot of these offshoot roads here they do have gates but a lot of times there won't be any gates don't go down those roads stay on the main forest road and you'll be fine i hope i caught that there was some lenticular clouds over that mountain. I'm not sure which mountain that is. I'll have to look it up when I get home. I always think those are cool. That's the first time I've seen them, like not in a photograph in person. Again, here passing through someone's private property. Somebody private owns this. It's not uh, like timber company land or something. I just saw their house. Very nice, big house out here. So almost back to the main road. As I left dirt for the last time on this trip, I was filled with conflicting emotions. On one hand, an almost mourning for the adventure, the scenery, and the calmness I was leaving behind. And on the other, a building excitement to return home, back to the familiar things and people that I know. While one should strive to occasionally step away from that familiar, it is vital to remember its importance. It's what keeps us going. It is why we wake up every day, both for your loved ones, but more importantly, yourself. Being out in nature is my way of recharging the mental and physical battery, the battery that sustains me at home. I hope that however you recharge your battery, that you are able to make time for that. It is vital to your existence, it is vital to your survival, and most importantly, it is vital to your soul. I hope you enjoyed watching my trip on the Oregon BDR. If you enjoy my content, please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss one of my uploads. I want to thank you sincerely for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.